Hi, Dave Yunkwist, Last Cavalry TV. Welcome to part two of creating a World War I trench in 1 16th scale. What we're going to do in today's video is show you the amount of progress that I've made, which isn't a lot, uh, show you a past World War I trench that I created, a World War I Brit in 1 10th scale that I'm working on, and then we'll end up showing you how to paint boots and leather effects. Let's get started. This John Smith model bow figure is the focal point of the diorama. He's completely finished in Vallejo and Andrea acrylics. So as you can see, I've begun constructing the trench walls. Uh, the trench walls are constructed from basswood. And the posts, out of the sticks, you know, I found in the backyard and, and local parks. These will be then highly detailed, uh, wired up, and more progress, I promise, will be made. This is a large-scale trench diorama that I completed a few years back, again using John Smith model bow figures. This project took approximately one year to complete, and it was sure heck of a lot of fun. This trench features a dugout. A lot of backyard products used on this one. We have a machine gun nest, the MG0815. This trench diorama is called the Thousand Yard Stair and depicts a German trench in the Western Front 1918. You'll also notice a sniper shield surrounded by sandbags. Here's a good overview of the trench. Now, the groundwork and everything, again, we'll be using the exact same techniques on the new diorama, and we're going to show you how to do them all. Continuing on the World War I theme, I've just started this one-tenth scale World War I British infantryman at the Somme from Young Miniatures. In a featured video in the near future, I'm going to illustrate and show how to paint the clothing. And yet another World War I figure. One-tenth scale Nemrod bust of World War I French Palou, painted with Andrea acrylics, Vallejo acrylics. The plaque on this is actually a piece of shrapnel that I picked up in Verdun. Well, this is the Jeff Shue figure, uh, the 120 millimeter piece, the machine gunner that's going to be in the diorama. And I'd like to show how I create mud effects and also paint the leather of his boot. So I'm using Vallejo Dark Mud, and I'm just going to dab this in before paint. Of course, it is primed. This dark earth, again, is an acrylic paste. Dries rock hard. And it's what I use to create all the mud effects on the clothing. Okay, we'll let that dry, and then we'll apply our first layer of paint. Okay, probably should have let the mud effects dry a little bit more. That's okay. Now, rule number one when painting black boots or black leather gear is don't paint it black as your base coat. I'm actually using dark camo black brown from Vallejo, and we're going to paint right over the mud effects. And I do like to put on the mud first because when we go back in and add our shading and highlighting washes, it just creates a more natural effect uh, that I found anyways. So we paint this as very, very dark brown. And we'll let that dry for a moment. Now that the dark black brown has dried, we can go in with flat black. And I do recommend the Andrea flat black. The Andrea flat black dries dead matte, where I found the Vallejo always tends to dry just a little bit shiny. You can see if we painted the boots black, there is no chance to add any type of shadow. So we just block these in. And let that dry for a moment. Now for our highlight color, I'm using my favorite color, Vallejo Burnt Umber.
So you can see there's some pretty nice contrasts. And then of course, we must let it dry. Now that our base color, our, sh our shadow, and our highlights have dried, go back to the old reliable Vallejo smoke. Remember in the last video we were using it to create wood grain effects. Now we're going to use it to create a satin finish on the leather and also unify our three colors. So we thin that down quite a bit, it's like a wash, and we're going to lay that in. And then we'll go back and punch up the mud effects and show you how those are created. Now that the Vallejo smoke washes have dried, we're going to go in with Vallejo flat earth color, and we're going to keep again the mixture very thin at this point, and start laying that color into where we placed the Vallejo dark earth mud effects. So you can see it's just dabbing it in, letting the water move the color around. Then a little bit of Iraqi sand, also by Vallejo. I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry. And using the magic of television, here it is. Thanks so much for stopping by. In the next video, we're going to show you some real progress on the trench and get into some heavy-duty groundwork effects. It's been Dave Youngquist, Last Cavalry TV.